Okay guys, Pamo here again. A uh, quick update on the FTO track car build. Uh, you might have realised in the last video I hinted just a little bit at a possible head swap with this engine here. Unfortunately, it looks like that's going to be the case guys. So, uh, just to update you, I got the timing belt on absolutely fine. I tried to turn the engine over and we got a bit of a locking up going on inside the engine block. So, upon a lot of investigation, I found that the guy who had taken the engine out of the car previously must have dropped a washer into one of the bores, uh, which it got stuck underneath one of the valves. So, as a quick update, just to show you what sort of stage we've got to, behind me now you'll be able to see an engine block with no cylinder head on it, which is looking a little bit depressing. So, we've got three pistons and no cylinder head, guys. And over here, We've got ourselves a cylinder head minus one valve, which, to be fair, was actually holding fluid in the cylinder. But I've chosen to take the option just to do the cylinder head swap because, as you can see, there's quite a lot of damage around where the valve seat is there. So we'll keep you updated. It looks like I'm probably going to be a little bit delayed with getting a bit more work done. But without haste, we'll get the cylinder head off the second car and I suppose we'll just see what we can do, guys. So watch the space and pay more. Okay, so pay more back in. Uh, today is day number two of messing around with this FTO cylinder head. Uh, down to my left that I keep looking at here is the other engine. So what we're going to do is take this valve cover that you can see just here off. Uh, on this engine, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cut this belt. <laughs> See you later. Uh, take me much less time, and I'm not going to use this engine afterwards anyway, so it's just for spares. Uh, we'll take the, the whole cam girdle off the engine, uh, take all the intake stuff off here. If I just move that out of the way, you can be able to see this all this intake pipe work here, fuel lines, uh, and then we'll be able to get the cylinder head off, guys. So uh, check back in a few minutes, and we'll see how we're getting on.
there's all the cam set up folks there's your valves have a look on the underside of this shows you all the collets which are particularly troublesome in these cars if I just give you a little idea what we're looking at here these little plastic parts quite often snap off on these vehicles and what they do is they hold these little collets in place which tap on the ends of the valves and then give you your uh, your valve correction so it looks like we're missing two here and one here guys so what I'm going to have a quick look for now which I can see one of is one of the little uh, pads and I can see a second one here which I'm going to have to fish out with a magnet because it's stuck in there pretty good there's my magnet tool there we are just a little bit of steel guys like that just sits in here. I'm not happy with it obviously so I'm thinking we might need to change them before we use this head. It's still missing one so what I'll do is I'll just give you a little uh, look at what's going on inside of here. So being a Mivec engine you've got standard cams and rollers but you've also got deep within the valves of here an oil feed which feeds the Mivec part of the cam so that gives you the higher valve lift higher up in the, in the rev range. A lot of people will have read about the half moon seals on this car. The half moon seals actually sit just here and they're particularly prone to leaking because this thing doesn't have an actual gasket. It's got basically an RTV sealant that runs around this line that you can see here. And it's crucial that that's applied properly. If it's not applied properly, you'll get oil leaking into, sorry, you'll get gasket leaking into here and blocking these oil passageways, which is a nightmare. And you'll also get oil leaking out of this end here, because this is basically just a flat plastic surface. They could have done, in my opinion, with grooving this, like they have done with the head, so that they could then put the form in place gasket in, and you know everything would be a much nicer, nicer fit. You can actually see on this head, I believe, just down here, if I move this all out of the way, you can see down here where there's a lot of black which is where there's been oil leaking out the side of this engine, like most of the FTOs. Okay. Okay, right, so I think we've had a bit of a failure there, guys. Uh, looks like my camera decided it was going to stop working. So we've moved over to my girlfriend's, which actually looks like a much better picture. But um, pretty much at the point now where I'm ready to take the cylinder head off, I've just removed the exhaust manifold. You may or may not have seen some of that. It's just standard practice exhaust manifold removal. Uh, and now we're going to attack these eight cylinder head bolts. So Right, the FTO manual states that you need a special tool to do this with um, because they've got fancy bolts. Now the bolts are pretty standard to me these days. They've got 12 point hex headed 10 millimeter. So something like something like that is going to do you fine. Let me just point that correctly at the camera. Right. So do the center ones first guys, little crank. Oh. Ah, and that 
it's not too good. Okay, so my bar has decided to snap on me. That's okay. We'll pop that in the bin. Cheap tools, guys. Cheap tools. Okay, so let's try that a different way. Let's put a bigger tool together. And we'll try it that way. Same sort of head. So I'm working from the inside to the outside. As you can see guys, it's actually pretty tight on this one. Okay. Right, okay guys, so as you can see, some of the head is off. Thing is full of coolant. I don't really care because this block in this bottom end is knackered anyway, so it doesn't matter. Toss. Um, we've got the cylinder head off. I will just pick it up and give you a little look at it. It's a bit wet at the moment from the coolant, but there you go. There's 12 valves, looking a lot healthier than they were on the other cylinder head with no mashed quench pads. So we'll take this now and we'll clean this up and we'll stick it on the other engine. Okay, we're pretty much finished. Uh, just to show you what you end up with once you've done all what I've just done there. Obviously, it's only partially torn down, done very, very quickly. No care for the coolant, no care for the oil. Uh, you've got your cam, all the setup with the cams, the Myvec stuff, cylinder head bolts, cylinder head itself, deep, deep, deep. intake manifold, fuel rails, you've got spark plug boots. You've got exhaust manifold, bolts and nuts, washers, sorry. Cut of miscellaneous 10mm, get my socket out of the way. And then the bolts that hold the crank girdle, eh, sorry not the crank, the cam girdle down onto the cylinder head. There you go guys. So we're going to play with all this stuff, clean it up and stick it in the other engine.